Hey there, welcome to Hardcore Sustainable. Today I wanted to give you a little tour of my seed buckets. Uh, I've been saving seed for over 25 years now. Uh, I've been gardening since I was a little kid and sort of got into seed saving um, around college, late college time, and um, started a seed collection. And so now I've built up that seed collection. I've actually lost probably most of the varieties that I uh, was trying to save seeds of over the years, but there's a few of them that I've kept going for at least 25 years. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little tour of my uh, buckets uh, and those different varieties that I have today and uh, talk about seed saving. And one of the things I really love about seed saving is, well, there's a couple things, you know. One of them is that you can get these great varieties that um, you might not be able to find in a seed catalog. You can get them from as heirloom varieties, from people that you meet along your gardening experience. But you can also get varieties that are unusual that you might not grow otherwise and you might not be able to find in those seed catalogs, but that can be well adapted to very specific conditions that you're dealing with. Or you just want to have some vegetable that fills a niche in your diet. You want some variety that you can grow in a specific area of your yard, like you want uh, a bean that you can grow up a uh, trellis. There's just such a diversity of domesticated uh, plants and useful plants out there and if you can save your own seed um, you can keep those going and then you can also uh, pass them on to other people and you can get them from other people and then you can keep them going yourself so that you're not always dependent on ordering from a seed catalog. Um, I think there's a place for, for seed from seed catalogs like hybrids and, and things like that that produce really well and if you're going for volume, that's great, depending on the conditions. But if you're looking for, like, a bean variety that will produce good green beans throughout the summer in any kind of weather, then you probably won't be able to find a seed that will meet that need. But if you're saving seeds, you can hook into, like, a network of seed savers, like the Seed Savers Exchange, and you can find some of those varieties, and then you can keep the seed going yourself from year to year. So this is one of two buckets of seeds that I have, and since I've been collecting seeds and saving seeds for so many years, um, I have quite a collection built up, but I have to go through here and sort of cull the older seeds every once in a while and make sure that my seeds are up to date. And every year I also go through them and I uh, pull out the ones that I'm gonna have to grow for the next season to make sure that I continue to grow them because once they get you know three to five years old depending on what kind of a seed they are uh, you have to replant them and and save seed again and that's what I'm doing today basically I'm going through and uh, figuring out which seeds I have and which ones I don't and which ones I might need to order next year but you can see this is a big bag of, this is lettuce seed, and it is so easy to get a huge amount of lettuce seed. I mean, this is, I, I plant lettuce in my hoop house, and this is enough lettuce seed to plant for like a few years worth. And I got this all from just letting some plants go to seed in that hoop house over the summer. And then I uh, collected the seed, uh, sifted and winnowed it, and this is all really good fresh seed. Lettuce is one of the easiest things you can uh, save the seeds of because it does not cross readily with other varieties. They, it self-pollinates. So you can keep that variety true uh, year to year. This is a, a Ford Hook Lima Bean. These are not in the best shape, but they still should be viable and, and I should be able to plant them in future years. This is a caster. I, you know, re reuse uh, old seed packets and I just relabel them and then put the date on them. This is a castor, like a dwarf red castor flower plant, ornamental plant. And what is this? Amish paste. There's some Amish paste tomatoes that I save seeds of. I know it's kind of hard for you to see what, what this is, but, um, but that actually is, uh, this is a Principe Borghese, um, tomato as well. 
So sometimes when I'm saving the seeds at the end of the season, I'll save the seeds and then I'll just uh, throw them in, throw the packets in this bucket. And then that's what I'm doing now is sorting these out and I'm going to put them into their own separate bags by type of vegetable. So these are chili peppers. This is a petunia flower. Saved a little seed from a petunia. See if I can grow that. This is some of the seed from the rice experiment that I had this year. So I'll put this in with the other rice in a miscellaneous uh, packet, miscellaneous uh, bag. What else do I have? Some of these I just didn't get to planting this year. I would like to replant this, but I think this seed is really old and I don't think it's going to be viable anymore. So this is a neat one. It's a lab lamb bean. It's a pole bean. But it has a bright purple uh, leaves and pods. And I don't even know if it's edible, uh, but it has pretty purple flowers as well. I think it's mostly grown ornamentally, but I think, I believe these are edible, but you can see they're an unusual shape for a bean seed. Um, I'm trying to remember the kind of bean that, uh, there's a name for this kind of bean. I had one that was white flowered and it was a bush bean that I got from an Indian man that I met a long time ago. And, uh, I probably still have seeds of that one. And then we've got some cow peas here. This must be my bean, uh, my bean bucket. But you can see running conch uh, cow pea. It's got a really pretty cow design. Um, kind of like a Holstein. These are some of the older seeds of that, I think. Um, this is, oh, you know, this is a sorghum. This is pretty cool. This is a mung sorghum. So this is sweet sorghum, and you plant this, and it's like sugar cane. So the stalk is, uh, has sweet sugar in it, and that's what actually Sand Hill Community, which is a nearby intentional community, they grow sorghum, sweet sorghum, and then they boil it down into a syrup, and it's used as a sweetener. It was used traditionally as a sweetener around here, but this one is actually from um, from Laos and the Hmong people. And I, I got these seeds from uh, some gardeners at, in Madison, Wisconsin, where I used to live, and I've kept those seeds going. I need to plant them again, though, because these are from 2012, and... I don't know how viable these are going to be since they're so old. This is a red bean. This is one I've been keeping going from Nicaragua uh, from a long time ago. This is probably not any good anymore, though, because it says it's from 2009. Sometimes I just don't have enough time to plant them, and then I end up, you know, losing that variety. And when they get this old, like if the seeds are no longer viable, like this is a Trail of Tears from 2007, and I'm probably just going to eat these because I'll cull these and then I'll eat them because they're not really going to be viable at this point. Here's another packet from 2012 of the same kind, um, and it says it had good germination in 2016. So there might still be something viable in this in the seeds here maya colima that's another cow pea i know that variety so that's getting old as well but cow peas tend to have longer lasting seed this is another cow pea i don't remember what variety this is i think this is blue goose from the looks of it what else do we got and this one main yellow eye I'm going to have to plant this one again. I hope that it's still going to be viable. It's from 2015. But this is a really good, like, soup bean and stew bean. So let's see. These ones say Saya Musume. Saya Musume. And this is a kind of a, a soybean, like a um, edamame. So you eat it. You shell it green. They're just delicious. And this one I'm probably going to have to try to plant again. They don't last very long, so hopefully this will still be good. But I've had so many experiences where I plant a bunch of old soybean seed like this, 
and like three of them come up and it's kind of a pain when you plant an entire bed of seed and uh and only three plants come up so i would recommend if you're going to plant these plant them every year and save seed of them every year so you're always having fresh seed the problem that i have is i plant these in my garden and um and the rabbits eat them so it's really hard for me to even get a crop off of them because rabbits always seem to be able to find a way to get into my garden which is a fencing issue Mitla black peppery. This is not going to be any good, but this one I remember from a long time ago. This is actually like a really good desert variety of bean. They seem to produce well in really dry conditions, even though they're, I think they're a relative, like a, a regular phaseolus variety. So it's pretty cool, but these ones are from 2007 and they are unlikely to be viable anymore. Sometimes varieties that grow really well in dry conditions will last a lot longer. I don't know why that is. So this is a Tennessee Cut Short. This is an interesting variety that you grow and you shell the beans. You, they're shelling beans, so you harvest them not when they're in the green bean stage. Like green beans you usually think of as eating just the pod part and it doesn't have the seeds developed. But this one you wait until the seeds are developed and they get fat but you don't wait until they dry out. You harvest them when they're still green or still uh, not dry. And then you shell the beans like you would dry beans. And they're great, great stew beans. If you eat meat, you put a ham hock in there uh, with those and it's just so good. TC Jones tomato, so this is one that I increased this year. I got a few of these that slid down the side. Uh, this is a friend's cuke. This one's kind of interesting. It's really old seed. I don't know if it will be viable anymore, but when I lived at Friends Co-op back in 1994 through 1998, um, when I first got there, I found these this packet of cukes. I think that's where it was, that was in the shed at Friends Co-op, and then I saved seeds of it, and I had been kept keeping it going. It was a, it was like a pickling cucumber. So I had been keeping it going, and I didn't know what the variety was, so I just named it Friends Cuke. That's kind of how varieties get started. And this is Hampshire's Shelling Pea. And this one I've had going ever since I did uh, a apprenticeship on an organic farm. When was that? 1993. So I had a shelling pea that I got from that experience and I've been keeping it going. So this one's still viable. I have recent, fairly recent seed of this, but I've been keeping it going and sort of collecting it over the years. So that's 25 years. Crazy. Crazy to think that I've been saving seeds that long. This is some corn. This is the corn bag. So yeah, this is the way I separate my um, different kinds of vegetables and grains is having a big bag that I hold all the seeds of that type so I can think, I can remember like, oh, there's uh, the tomatoes are all in this bag and the peppers are all in this bag. This, obviously, <laughs> I have to eat. Um, I don't know why I put this back in here, but this is a huge bag of cow peas. I planted a huge bed of them one year because I wanted to be able to plant them as a cover crop. The problem is I plant these out in the vineyard and, um, and the deer just come in and eat them all. And the rabbits, I think, eat them as well. So they never really get very far in the vineyard, but cow peas are such a great cover crop to plant because they, um, not only fix nitrogen, but you can harvest a crop off of them and they will have residual nitrogen. They will have a net addition of nitrogen to the soil. Normally, in order to get the benefits of nitrogen from legumes, you have to till them in. Like soybeans don't really add a lot of uh, like net. They don't add net nitrogen to the soil. They just don't bring it down as much as crops like corn do. There's a couple other fun ones. Um, this is a Laotian yard long bean, purple yard long bean, and I got this from a Laotian garden, gardener in Madison at the community gardens there. And it's a, a purple 
bean that gets to be at least like two or three feet long and uh, you harvest it when it's, you know, kind of about medium sized as far as the thickness of like a green bean. Yeah, I've had this, these seeds going for probably like 15 years now. And then this one is Frijolevaras, which is another, these are both called asparagus beans uh, as well, but they're also called yard long beans. Frijolevaras is from Nicaragua, so I got that in 1994 when I was there. This is a pretty traditional, I guess, variety of yard long bean that they grow there. This one is green. It only gets to be about a foot long, maybe a little bit longer, um, and it's skinny. Both of these grow super good in super dry weather or wet weather. They're just amazing because they're a way to produce, you know, an edible green bean throughout the summertime when other uh, green bean varieties might not grow so well. They also will just like continue to produce all season long. They're a pole bean that they just keep on putting out more and more beans. Um, unlike the, the bush beans that tend to have like a crop and then you harvest them all and then they sit there and then maybe they get another crop later in the season. So wherever I go, I like to gather and save, collect different varieties of vegetables. And my seed collection tells a story of all the different places that I've been. These ones are actually pigeon peas. So I won't be able to grow these in Missouri. But who knows, maybe if I end up having a place in Florida, I'll be able to get some of these going. Because they take over six months. <laughs> it's basically like a huge bean. But they cook them kind of like dry beans and they're edible, but they just keep on producing and they make kind of a large bush. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share and give a thumbs up to the video. And I'll see you next time.